A very good afternoon and welcome here to Barclays Center here in Brooklyn. Great to be back here in an arena that has been home to so many tremendous and exciting moments in boxing, specifically with Premier Boxing Champions. And lo and behold, we are back with PBC on Fox Sports pay-per-view on Saturday, October 15th, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, is when we go live on pay-per-view in our main event of the evening, the highly anticipated return of the former WBC heavyweight champion of the world, the bronze bomber Deontay Wilder steps inside the ring yet again as he will collide against the Nordic nightmare Robert Hellenius, that being in our main event of the evening. This card is absolutely loaded on Saturday, October 15th. Why? Because not only do we have a dynamic main event, but our co-main event can be a main event anywhere around the world because we have a matchup in the super middleweight division between two former champions. The returns of Caleb Sweethands Plant as he will make his way inside the ring, across the ring from him on Saturday, October 15th, will be Anthony the Dog Durrell. Now, tickets are available right now. You can purchase them on SeatGeek.com, BarclaysCenter.com, or if you are here in the New York, Brooklyn area, you can purchase them in person at the American Express box office here at Barclays Center. Now, just to give you an idea of the ramifications of both fights, both Wilder and Hellenius and Plant and Durrell are eliminator fights. So they are both eliminator fights, Wilder, Hellenius in the heavyweight division, for Plant and Durrell in the super middleweight division. It's all being promoted by Bomb Squad Promotions and TGB Promotions presented by Premier Boxing Champions. With that being said, I want to introduce one half of our co-main event. This man with a record of 34 wins, two defeats, 25 victories coming by way of knockout. He comes to us, he's very proud of where he is from. Flint, Michigan, a two-time WBC super middleweight champion of the world looked absolutely sensational as he knocked out Marcos Hernandez last November in the lead up to this fight. He doesn't have to come up to the podium. He can sit at his chair, but ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former super middleweight champion of the world, Anthony the Dog Terrell. <laughs> AD, how you feeling? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, ready to fight, ready to be some ass. All right, well, I will talk with Anthony Durrell in a few moments as we want to bring up his adversary on Saturday, October 15th on Fox Sports BBC pay-per-view. This man, a near-perfect record, 21 wins, 12 of those coming by way of knockout against one defeat. He comes to us right outside of Nashville, grew up in Ashland City, Tennessee, now training and residing in Las Vegas. Former IBM Super Middleweight Champion of the World who captured his title by having a thoroughly dominating performance against Jose Luis Uscatiki. He would subsequently go on to defend his title on three occasions successfully, and he makes his return to the ring after a very competitive matchup against Canelo Alvarez last November in Las Vegas. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former IBM Super Middleweight Champion of the World, Caleb Sweethands Plant. Caleb, how are you feeling? Yeah, you just want to give your thoughts? Yeah, feeling good. Um, you know, I want to thank Al Heyman. I want to thank Luis Cubas Jr. Um, feels good to be back on Fox. Shout out to the Barclays. You know, appreciate you having me. This will be my first time fighting in New York. And um, I'm looking to do so in impressive fashion come October 15th. Um, you know, this guy, he's kind of funny to me. He's got a lot to say about me. He says, you know, I hate him. And... You know, I know that's a strong word, but I do, I hate him. And, you know, he irks me. I guess I irk him because, you know, I, I may not hold hands with everyone else in my weight division and, you know, be all buddy-buddy with him and, you know, stuff like that. I, I don't know what his deal is with me. Um, he, he's got a lot to say about me. He, but the thing is, he, he don't even know me. I never kicked it with him, never hung out with him. He, he don't even know me. So um, October 15th is definitely going to be fireworks. You He's gonna even be now. running, man. Stop it. Sounds you're good. Running. Sounds good. You're running. So, you know you but, running. Uh, you ain't never you know, sat there he, with he, nobody. Even on, even on a social nobody. media the other day, you know, he had the nobody. Bernard Hopkins versus Joe Kozaki thing. You ain't never sat there with nobody. Um, Run. You know, 
saying, I'll never let a white boy beat me. I'll never let a white boy beat me. And you know, boxing nor life has ever been about race or color to me. But you remember what happened in that fight, right? Since that's what you wanted to post up. Do you remember? So, you know, like I said, it ain't never been about race or color to me. Run. But come October Run. 15th, when I do beat him, Run. it won't be because I'm white. It won't be because of what I look what like. I do it it won't have nothing to do with none of that. What It'll be because I'm better than him. It'll be because I'm better than him. That's why I'm going to beat him. <laughs> but he already knows that. And that's why he hates me. Because like I said, he don't know me personally. <laughs> he don't know me enough to hate me. So why, why would you hate me unless you know that you can't fuck with me? That's why he hates me. He gonna really hate me on October 15th, so. So Anthony, we, we heard Caleb go ahead and give his thoughts on, you know, there seems to be some bad blood between you two, but from your perspective, where does this all stem from? Yeah, so. <laughs> w w was there a yeah, specific, so. was I mean, there a, You name somebody that like them. Nobody likes them, man. Nobody. And again, he make it, he, he making a point to, Canelo you know, let everybody you, know he no one in the weight you. class likes Canelo you. And you. If, you do like, if you do like he Caleb, then, like a bitch. and if you do like he him, then you're not in his weight class. Why would I care if anybody in my weight class likes me? Nobody care about Nobody why, care why, why about Why is that my concern? Well, then why are you saying that? I'm asking, why are you saying that then? Why would it be my concern? I don't like you. You don't have to like me. Yeah, good. That ain't none of my business right, if you like well, me. Don't, don't, don't worry about my opinion. And, That's and my it, opinion to you. And everyone don't else in the weight, my fucking weight class don't like you. him. That ain't none of my business. I don't care nothing about that. I never let another man smack me. That ain't you none crazy. of my concern. You lost so, your mind. So we we really, it, ain't gonna, it wouldn't, it wouldn't me, even been a fight. even know me. You let another man smack you, you a pussy. You pussy. Shut up. With with the bad blood. Sound good. You pussy. Maybe that's like what I you said, want. You that, maybe that, maybe you that's his job. You let another man smack you. Make sure that another man smack career, me, he might got the die. You want to make sure at the end of his pussy. career, hey, you, pussy. you know, I'm Anthony Durrell. You pussy. I never, I'm never going to yeah, be in the pussy. Hall of Fame. I never had one successful title defense, but hey, everybody in my weight class like me. You fought me. tomato cans. Everybody you in my fought cab drivers. Who? Like, who's got to get... You, that's what you want to title. I gave, I gave you respect for that. U Uscott Uscott I, fucked I, your brother up. I gave you respect for that. How many times? I gave you respect for that. You, you, but you fought getting, cab drivers. You getting his ass beaten the first time. So you weren't supposed to fight me before Canelo, and then you backed out of it. Nah, Stop it. Get the fuck out. out of here. I was, you, you know I was supposed to hey, fight you. I don't, I don't hit hard. Shut up. All I you have lying. Is, all I have is that. You lying. Jose Uscott was fucking his brother up. Stopped him the first fight and the second fight. What that got to do with anything? And then what I come through and do to Jose What that got to do with anything? What I do to Jose Uscott What that got to do with anything? He wasn't even himself. You knew he wasn't himself. Stop it. What that got to do with anything, Hey, you beat him, all of a sudden, man, I didn't kill myself tonight. You guys have been, this fight has been talked about for a while. In your mind, with the way your career trajectory has gone, did you think that it was inevitable even dating back to a couple of years ago, that you were going to fight Anthony Durrell. Was this the guy that you thought at some point or another, we're gonna lock horns inside the ring against? I mean, I didn't know for sure, but I thought it could be a possibility. But I mean, you know, with me having a title, he, he couldn't even hang on his title long enough for us to even make a unification Man. fight. He wins the title, he loses it right away. He, he, went, he beats a, a blown you up middleweight it. in Saki Obika, he it. loses it to Badu Jack. He gets it back, he loses it right again. He never had one successful title defense. Who Name so a person you fought a other chance. than Canelo uh, and Uskataki. That's it. I mean, name I mean, a person. We, name a person. Right. I, mean, I have. We less, we I we'll wait. We'll wait. Let's wait, y'all. Let's wait. How many have you fought? Let's wait. You got twice the fights. Let's I wait. Got. But let's wait. You got twice the no, fights. No, but who I got. you fight? With let's 22 wait. fights. I fought the best. Who you fight? Who? Who you fight? Who? But who you fight? Who? No, fuck that. Na answer my question. Who you fight? Right, ain't nobody. nobody. Ain't he just shook his head. Nobody. Y'all get that. Anthony, nobody. It, it sounds to me like you're saying that your experience. Nobody but Canelo. It, it, it sounds to me He's like mad. you are alluding to mad. the fact that your experience. He's you big feel mad. like your experience is going to play a significant factor in the fight. Is that fair to say that you feel like your experience over fuck the past experience. 14 I'm years. I'm beating his ass. Fuck experience. I'm beating his ass. Is this he sounds, he sounds mad to me. Anthony, is this the most... You raise your hand when you're talking. I'm, I'm going to get back to Caleb momentarily, but Anthony, is this the most emotional fight that you've had in a few years? I mean, is this the most that you've really gotten the adrenaline and the juices flowing for an opponent instead of it being just, quote-unquote, business, as they say? No, nah. nah, it is, it is just another fight. Uh... 
you know, I'm preparing as any other fight. Uh, come down to it, October 15, he'll see. Caleb, for you, you were obviously in a, in a matchup against Canelo Alvarez, obviously, you know, temper is boiled over there. With this fight, are you taking this from an emotional standpoint? Is it just a, this is a guy that's in front of me and I need to win this fight to continue to try to reclaim my world title? Where is the mindset of Caleb Plant heading into October 15th against Anthony Durrell? Um, you know, I try to approach every fight the same. I treat every fight the same. You know, I'm all in and, um, you know, but I'm focused, I'm focused, I'm motivated. I'm having a great camp. You know, I have my father with me still, who's a great coach. I have Brad Mann, Stephen Edwards with me, who's a great coach. And, um, you know, we got a great game plan put together. We're having a great camp. And uh, I just can't wait for October 15th. I want to acknowledge the camps momentarily. I'm glad you brought up your new trainer, Stephen Bradman Edwards. And, and Bradman, I want to ask you, this is your first fight with Kayla Plant. And I know you guys have been working tirelessly. The one thing I will say about Kayla Plant and Anthony Durrell is that their work ethics are tireless and they constantly put time in the gym. But Bradman, for Caleb, what has it been like to work with Caleb Plant and really kind of get on the same page as you prepare for October 15th? Um, it's been a pleasure working with him. Uh, you know, it was funny because, um, you know, when he first approached me, my uh, dilemma was, you know, can I go away, get be away from my kids that long, you know? And um, it has to be a fighter that's worth it. So uh, I went out to Vegas for about a week, and then he came to Philly on two different occasions just to see if we had a chemistry and everything was working. And I was like, wow, this kid is worth it. He's the real deal. You know, I'm an active father in my kid's life, you know, and um, training camp is long and grueling. And my kids are 10 and 11, you know, and I really wanted to make sure to myself, it was more than just money. I wanted to make sure, like, is this, does this kid have an upside? Does he put the work in? Um, is he disciplined? Is he confrontational? You know, character means more to me than, um, than just talent. And, uh, and working with him, man, is a pleasure. You know, uh, hopefully, you know, we could finish this ride together. It's going to be tough for me to even work with other fighters after him because he kind of spoils you. He do everything right, never late to the gym, never has anything negative to say. He puts in, you know, the work, and that's all you can ask for out of a kid. The wins and losses take care of themselves, but the work ethic and the road to getting there is the most important thing to me, the journey and the process. And um, this kid's the real deal. You know, his dad did a good job raising him, good job training him. And, um, and I'm not just saying this, um, it's a pleasure to work with him. He is, he's everything they say he is and then some. And I believe he has the upside. He's 30, but I believe he can get better. And uh, I'm looking forward to this performance on October 15th. Richie, thank you very much. Stephen Bredman Edwards, for you, Richie, uh, can you give us your, you know, synopsis on how camp has been going with the new team? And obviously, Caleb and Bredman seems to be on the same page. You're in there in the trenches in training camp. But so far, how's the experience been like with this new team that is Sweet Hens? Uh, it's been great. You know, from the as soon as we met, we, we hit it off. Uh, we've known him for a few years. And um, uh, we were very excited about an opportunity to, you know, for us all to work together. And, um, you know, camp is just going great. He's a great coach, uh, very smart, got all the experience and the savvy. And um, we work well together. We, you know, our, our, uh, our thoughts on boxing are pretty much the same. And, and um, we say mostly the same thing. He's just kind of a taller, better looking version of me you know? I see. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you very much mr plant also before i get back to team Durrell, congratulations caleb to you and your lovely wife jordan plant on the birth of your newborn daughter charlie lynn plant that was born five days ago so congratulations to caleb and your entire family wishing you all the best i'm going to turn it over right now to sugar hill Stewart, the esteemed trainer of Anthony the Dog Durrell that has been embodied in the fabric of boxing in the Motor City. Sugar Hill for you and with Anthony, you guys have been to the mountaintop before and looking to get back there in this eliminator fight against Caleb Plant, but has there been any change in the demeanor for Anthony Durrell heading into this fight? Because both men 
uh, seem to be very charged heading into October 15th from Barclays Center here in Brooklyn? Uh, well, for me, you know, Anthony trains hard, but uh, yeah, obviously, definitely what everybody can see right now, yeah, it's something extra uh, with Anthony and, uh, and also with Caleb, you know, so um, if that's what it takes to motivate these guys and for them to put out their best effort, then uh, yeah, I'm happy for it. I'm happy they're both energetic. And uh, that means both of them are going to go train hard. Uh, they both have something to prove. And uh, this is exciting for me, training Anthony, that, uh, you know, he has something to prove, something he wants to accomplish. And uh, him knowing that Caleb is the same way. So this, uh, it just makes for an exciting fight. This is a fight that uh, Anthony said, uh, talked about before, about having this fight. So uh, he had to wait for it. And now it's here. And uh, he's definitely excited and motivated. Well, Anthony, you've been also busy in your off time as well. I saw that you were hanging out with the uh, all-time leader in uh, championships for golf and in the tournaments, Jack Nicholas. you know, getting some lessons on the uh, greens. How was that experience like as you learned some lessons from uh, Jack Nicholas before we get back to talking about business with uh, Caleb Plant? Uh, it was great uh, just to get away for a, a day or so uh, and go out there with one of the greats, uh, get a little bit of motivation to be a great. Uh, so it, it was a great experience. Uh, hopefully there'll be more. So for you, what kind of statement are you looking to make against Caleb Plant on October 15th on Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view? Uh, just put on a good performance, be me. Uh, go out there, be the dog, be Anthony. Uh, that's what everybody knows me as. And uh, I'm just going out there and put on a good performance. Caleb, for you, in, in a perfect world, how do you see this fight going? And what kind of statement are you looking to make in your return to the ring on October 15th against Anthony Durrell? I'm looking to put on a great performance, looking to do it in fashion, get my hand raised in fashion, and, um, you know, make a big statement um, as I move forward to, you know, bigger and better fights and looking to clear out the, the rest of the division. With this being an eliminator fight, does it add any extra motivation or... No. No, uh, not, not for me. I mean, it could be, you know, I'm excited for it to be that. Um, I'm in a blessed position for it to be that, but, you know, it doesn't add any, you know, I'm not letting outside factors dictate how motivated I am or how focused or how disciplined I am. That I carry myself in that way, whether it was, you know, a six-round fight, four-round fight, it don't matter to me. I'm coming in focused. I'm motivated. I'm training hard. I got a great team with me. Um, I got a lot of momentum, and um, I'm looking to, uh, like I said, make a big statement come October 15th. Caleb, growing up and, and watching you both evolve, but you specifically in this particular instance, I remember when you were coming up through the ranks as a contender and you were calling out guys and, and you were looking to sign the dotted line against anybody. Now, when it comes to 168, it seems like guys are calling you out. So you went from being the hunter and now people are trying to hunt you. Uh, what has that been like in terms of that full circle transformation? Um, I mean, it just means that I've been doing my job, you know, staying focused and, um, you know, keeping boxing first in my life, whether I have a fight coming up or whether I don't. Um, but at the same time, you know, I've said this in other um, moments before, I, I don't feel like I'm the hunter. You know, I still feel like I'm hunting or I don't feel like I'm the hunter, but I still feel like I'm hunting. And, um, you know, there's still a lot of things that I want to accomplish in the sport, um, a lot of things I want to do. And, um, you know, that's going to take you know, first things first is handling business October 15th. And uh, that's what I'm fully focused on, but then moving on to, you know, whatever's next. AD, what has been the key to your success to be able to fight at such a high level over the course of your career? Because you have literally tried to fight anybody and everybody you've been in the ring against the who's who in the division for years on end. But what has been the key to your success to remaining uh, such a top tier super middleweight over the years? Uh, just just doing, doing what needs to be done outside the ring, you know, no smoking, no drinking type thing, uh, keeping your body, you know, where it needs to be. So uh, you do that, you take care of your body, your body will take care of you. Uh, simple as that. You, you can go, uh, but, I mean, just and staying ready, staying in the gym. Uh, that's my, that, that's what I've been doing since I've been amateur, staying in the gym. Uh, so I don't have to, you know, stay ready so I don't have to get ready. Well, Anthony Durrell, Kayla Plant, good luck, gentlemen, in training camp. We will see you on Saturday, October 15th from Barclays Center here in Brooklyn. If you guys can just stand up, 
look out this way and allow the cameras to go ahead and take photos. We have Caleb Sweethands, Plant Anthony, the dog Durrell in the super middleweight division. This may, this could be a main event anywhere in the world. It is the co-main event on Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view on Saturday, October 15th from Barclays Center here in Brooklyn. Thank you very much, gentlemen. A round of applause for Caleb Sweethands, Plant, and Anthony the Dog Durrell. Very much looking forward to fight week at Barclays Center here in Brooklyn. And gentlemen, you know, really appreciate it, guys. And thank you very much for coming out. And now we are going to be joined alongside by our main event of the evening uh, via satellite as we will be talking with, in a few moments, the Bronze Bomber, Deontay Wilder along with Robert, the Nordic Nightmare, Hellenius. And we are in the midst of such a great run on Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view. We obviously have this on Saturday, October 15th, but also this upcoming Sunday, a special Labor Day weekend edition of Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view in the heavyweight division. You know, the former Hellenius, unified heavyweight champion, Andy Ruiz, will take on the Cuban contender, Luis King Kong Ortiz. That comes your way this Sunday. September 4th from Crypto.com Arena in Los Angeles. And that'll be on Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view. But we are getting ready to talk with via satellite, and we apologize, but, you know, we had some travel issues, and we have gotten them, though, rectified and gotten the guys via satellite here that they will be talking with me on today's press conference uh, very much looking forward to talking with the Nordic Nightmare, who has a record of 30 wins, 3 losses, 19 wins coming by way of knockout. He represents Finland and has long established himself as one of the top heavyweights out in Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, with a record of 30 wins, 3 losses, 19 of those coming by way of knockout, coming off of back-to-back -back victories over the previously unbeaten Adam Kovnatsky, I want to welcome the Nordic Nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Robert, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me. I feel good. The training camp is going great this so far, so I'm ready. Robert, when they called you to fight Deontay Wilder, the bronze bomber, a man who is a former sparring partner, or you were a former sparring partner for him in the lead up to his last matchup, but what went through your mind when they said, hey, would you like to fight Deontay Wilder on October 15th? Yeah, of course, I, I've been uh, fighting a lot of good guys and uh, I've been, I have had a long career thus far. So I've been fighting for 25 years now. I have over 200 amateur fights. I have the experience and uh, of course it's a big fight for me and I have deep respect for him but uh, when I come to America I'm gonna give everything I have. All right thank you very much Robert we're gonna be speaking with you in a few moments and now it gives me the great honor and pleasure to welcome a man who comes back to Barclays Center where he has had some tremendous moments over the course of his career a native of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, 2008 United States Olympian with a remarkable knockout percentage of over 91% coming off of an epic trilogy against Tyson Fury. He has a record of 42 wins, two losses, one draw, 41 wins coming by way of knockout. He is looking to become a two-time heavyweight champion of the world in his first reign. Let me emphasize this. In his first reign as heavyweight champion of the world, 10 successful title defenses. That is unbelievable. Double digits he cracked in successful title defenses. He is led by his trainer, Malik Scott. Also want to acknowledge one of his co-managers, Shelly Finkel, who is in attendance here as well. But please welcome back to the ring. We cannot wait to see him compete. He brings electricity, the Bronze Bomber, Deontay Wilder. Deontay, how are you, my friend? What's up, Ray? 
is, is, you know, you never fail to impress, my friend. Deontay, for you, uh, obviously, you're headlining once again. Uh, what does this mean for you to get back inside the ring? Because one thing that I've seen on your social media, working with Malik Scott, is that you have been putting in quite a bit of rounds. I actually have the number here in front of me. The last time I saw, it was four days ago that you posted on your social media, you said 407 rounds. Uh, can you tell us about this you know, commitment that you have? Because I feel like you are in such a great place. Can, can you guys hear me clearly? Can what? Can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can hear you. I yes, can hear you, Deontay. In, okay, okay, sounds good. Yeah, we done put in, we done put in 407 rounds. Um, it's been great, you know, uh, training has been great. Um, when I uh, got the call to come and train, um, to try to do something different, you know, they, uh, with uh, me and Don House and I uh, brought all the team to, to to Vegas. You know, we wanted to try some some something different. Sometimes you need to change some stuff to have fun because when you when you when you when you're in a, a business and you do it for so long in the same routine, sometimes it can get boring. You know what I'm saying? So uh, with this one, we just we just wanted to change up some things. We wanted to go uh, longer rounds and um, see what happened. And uh, you know, I fell in love with the training. I fell in love with the uh, multiples of hours upon the day of uh, that we put in. And along with the night runs, you know, went Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So, you know, it, it's, it, it, was, it was great. You know, we started out at 18 rounds to 21, 26, 28, then 30, then 40. You know, uh, it could sound hardcore or uh, a lot on the body, but when you're in shape and, and your body is, is up to par with everything medically, physically, and mentally, you know, nothing is impossible. And throughout my whole career, I've tried to show many men and women that we all great. We all have greatness. Nothing is impossible. All you got to do is put your time and your and forth your service into what you're doing and perfect it. You know, and um, that's what we're doing. That's what I have done, and that's what we're doing even more so now. You know, so it's been a great. It's been great. Um, my career has been great, and here I am again. You know, for my second reign, it, 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 it's it's an amazing feeling to see, you know, going back and uh, reminisce about all the years that I, how I got into it and to where I am now. You know, it's been a pleasure. It's been an honor to uh, meet some of the people and to go some of the places I have gone and just do the things that have, you know, uh, we set a game plan and, um, and I executed that game plan inside and definitely outside of the ring, you know, and uh, I'm very proud to, uh, of all of my accomplishments. And now yeah. all my accomplishments don't go in vain because now I have all my accolades and accomplishments I've done inside and outside of the ring have been set in stone within the statue. So, um, you know, uh, I can't ask for nothing more. I'm looking forward to October the, the 15th to share the ring with, with Robert. You know, he's, uh, he's an amazing man. Uh, um, I highly respect uh, Robert and uh, his trainer, Elvis. Every time they come down, it's like a brotherhood, you know, it's, 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 it's a, a connection that we have. Unfortunately, the business that we chose to to participate in consists of us sometimes have to go against each other. Sometimes guys that come together, you know, know each other, love each other, have to come together and, and, and fight. And uh, these are the times that we're in. But, but you know, make no mistake, all, because we we know each other and, we have worked together with each other. You know, don't mean that the fight is not going to be interesting because you're looking at two war with a warrior mindset and a warrior heart. See, many people think the mind controls everything, you know, as far as the body and, and, and things like that. But the mind, the mind don't controls it all. The heart controls it everything. The heart controls everything because Many times your mind will tell you to give up, give in. It's too hard. Nobody cares. You ain't doing enough. And you'll give up. But that heart, if you got a big heart, your heart will tell you you ain't going to quit. You can't quit. You'll die for this. And, you know, with that being said, me and Robert have big hearts. We have warrior hearts. 
we come in with the with the with the mindset of winning, with the heart set on we're not gonna we're not gonna leave this 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 arena, you know, until we until something is done, until we're satisfied, until we have fed flesh, and now uh, we give we've gave it all we've got. And um, as you know, every time I fight, you you're on the edge of your seat because that's what I display. I display determination and the will to win and the heart. I buy by those words of being in the ring, giving it all I got, 110 percent. You know, uh, until I'm on my until I'm on my crawling knees, that's the only way to get me out of there. And um, it's going to be an exciting fight. I'm looking forward to this fight. And uh, uh, man, coming back to Bar uh, to Brooklyn at the Barclays Center with some of my most devastating, my most electrifying, my most exciting knockouts have occurred. My most uh, Remarkable rem memories, you know, right there at the Barclay Center. So I'm looking forward to coming back home to New York and uh, displaying my talent, you know, amongst the thousands that's going to be there and the millions that's going to be watching. This is going to be a major, major event, uh, a great card, and uh, a top main event that no one in the world want to miss. The Bronze Bomber is back, baby. Robert Hellini is just on a winning streak. He mean business. And he's looking to go places where he never have gone before. And now he has to face me and go through me. And uh, it's going to be an amazing, amazing fight, guys. And uh, <laughs> just stay tuned, baby. Deontay, because of the fact that you both know each other, there is such a, de uh, a level of respect between you and Hellenius. But because you guys have been sparring together, and you know the kind of fighter he is and the kind of man that he is, does that excite you to train that much harder because you know you have to be at your best to defeat him and he knows he has to be at his absolute best to try to defeat you on Saturday, October 15th on Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view? Oh, most definitely, most definitely. I got, I got high, re um, high respect for Robert. You know, I know what he's capable of doing. Like I said, I know where his heart is, you know, and um, I know that he's going to put it all on the line. He's coming to give his best, and um, I've come to do the same thing. So with that being said, it consists of uh, more rounds. It consists of more more time of training. It consists of a little bit more time of just going through the fundamentals and doing the right things because, uh, yeah, this is a serious fight, you know. You know what, you know, who's serious is who not. You know who come to fight and who who's, who just come there for a payday. And uh, this fight right here, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's going to be an amazing fight. You know, you're looking at two warriors in the heavyweight division and um, that's, that's ready to, to put it all on the line. So y you guys won't be upset. You won't be mad with this fight. It's going to be a hell of a fight. And, uh, and I can't wait. October the 15th is going to be a special moment in time for us all. And um, I'm looking forward to it. Robert, for you, because you are familiar with Deontay Wilder, the Bronze Bomber, does that make you and give you extra added motivation to train harder because you realize the kind of world-class, former world champion opponent that will be standing across the ring from you, one of the most devastating punchers in the heavyweight division's history in Deontay Wilder. Does that make you put extra time in at the gym to prepare for battle on October 15th from Barclays Center here in Brooklyn? Of course. Uh, I'm going to do everything in my power. Uh, we have been training since the last fight. I took uh, two weeks off and, and been training since then. Uh, I know what it takes uh, to, to get at this level and... and uh, I promised so many times my, my fans in Finland to bring the world championship uh, belt back to Finland. And, and uh, it, sometimes you have to go through, through some good people. And, and uh, I'm going to do everything in my power to, to do that. And uh, of course, I'm doing extra work every day, uh, many hours in the gym. Deontay, every guy that has stepped inside the ring with you, Every single one of them, they've been put on the canvas in the course of your career. Have you missed putting people away, knocking them out? You have been away from the ring for, it'll be just over a year. 
your knockout percentage is over 91%. Have you missed competing as a prize fighter? Uh, to be honest, to be honest right now, I haven't missed it at all. You know, um, many times I've sat around and, 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 and contemplated, you know, do I need to come back or not? Do I need to, you know, because I've done so well for myself outside of the ring um, to the point where I don't need boxing. You know what I mean? I don't, I've, I've financially, <laughs> I've, I've won all the way around. You know what I mean? And uh, this is some of the things that I've been trying to mentor. I've been trying to tell, especially us fighters, because I look at the fighters, man. And, uh, because I see we are the product at the end of the day. We come in and risk our lives, you know, and for, 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 for what is worth, you know, ain't no money, ain't, ain't no money, you know, can put a price on the life, you know, and you hear, you see so many fighters come in time in and time out, you know, don't have nothing to show for when the, when the game is up, when the business, this is a business, it's not a sport, it's a business, solely a business. And when the business is over with, you have none of these fighters have nothing to show for after, but they've given their life. <laughs> for others entertainment while everybody else take from them and, 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 and bribe them and, and, and trick them into certain things. You know, someone would say, you're paying the fighters too much money. How, how, how? When they risking their lives and you're not doing that, but sitting there and coming to a fight, getting dressed up just to be entertained. But someone would say they paying fighters too much. You know, I'm always going to be an advocate and a, hard, a hardcore speaker for fighters because People don't know what we go through day in and day out, time in and time out. And then you wonder why certain guys that get on, on TV or anywhere and express themselves and do tears or whatever because of mental illness or PTSD or any other things. You got to understand that when we get outside the ring, it may be more complications than what it may look like, you know, in person. That's why I tell all fighters, I recommend the mobs to go get MRIs, CAT scans, brain scans, Go get blood tests and stuff like that because you know you gotta understand the business that we in. It's an individual business. We have to do a lot of things of our own. A sport provide things for us. You know, a business, well, you have to do it. You have to provide it for yourself. And with that being said, sometimes it takes financial help for that, which a lot of fighters don't 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 get that aid to do so. Everybody always looking to make money. For themselves but what about the product that actually making money and people that's coming to see them make money so i had to think long and hard you know about a lot of things right because of the position that i'm in especially out of the ring and in life you know i i uh man it's an amazing then upon getting a statue you know uh it meant so much to me so i used to have those itch i used to have that 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 feeling of drawing, or I want to go back into the ring. I want to, I want to, I want to go to the gym and hit the bag. I went to the gym a couple of times and stuff to try to get that feeling and try to seek it. I couldn't find that feeling. That feeling wasn't there no more. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I don't know what it was. It just that feeling wasn't there no more. And then once once the statue was presented to me to see so many people come around the world to come and commune with me and my family to come and rejoice and celebrate with me and my, my my family, and to see grown men surrender themselves in, 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 in such a, 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 a vulnerable state, you know, to cry in front of their children, to let them know and let them say, this is a real king, this is a real example of greatness. Because I always tell everyone, we all, we're all, we all have greatness in us, but greatness is only determined by service. And that's what I try to do each and every day, apply my service, be a good human being in this world, to motivate, to inspire, to show people that you can do it no matter what. In life, people look at you and they look at a person and they try to see what can you do? What are your purpose in life? What is this, this person doing? You know, we many of us have occupations that we love and what we and that we hate. And and most of the time, most people have occupations that they hate than they than they love. But if you got something that you love to do, then it's not working, they say. And um, with this job, man, I, 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 what, by getting a statue, it let me know that there's more work to do. I got to continue to fight. I got to continue to motivate and inspire 
because I inspire so many. I can't be I I can't be selfish to the fact that I've done and achieved so much in my career and in my life and for my family that that this is it. So I had to sit myself aside. I had to think long and hard. And you know, while seeing those things at that revealing of the statue, I knew immediately like I had I got to come back. I got to I got to give my my service uh, to the world. You know, so. With this being said, the second ring is, is for the people, you know. It's always going to be for my family, no matter what I do, but this one is special for the people, you know, the inspiration, the motivation. Y'all hitting it right here, right now. I never said that I was retired or any of those things. People always, you know, especially journalists or media people, they always want to be first in being correct. And that's a big problem when it comes to fighters mixing up our words just to just to stretch, scratch you egos to get clicks and likes. And we don't like that. That's why we avoid some certain people not want to talk to them a certain thing because they switch things up. They switch the words or so many things that have been said and, and, and it shouldn't be like that. But this rain is going to be a special one. It's going to be dedicated to the people. Anybody that's looking for motivation and the will to win and determine, because like I said, we all have greatness in us. You can be a renaissance man like me. Me, I wear many hats. I'm not just an athlete, I'm not just a fighter. I do so many other things outside of the ring to stay afloat, to stay motivated. And that's what I want others to see, the greatness in them. You're not just great at one thing. You can be great at multiples of things and don't let people lim put a limitation on you to say, you know, that you're supposed to be good at one thing and this it. Because some people will look at you as, Whatever you're doing, that's that's what you do. That's great. And when you try to venture out to do something else, something else, multiples of things, then they look at you crazy. Look at well, you're not supposed to be doing that. Who say not? You do as many things that you can, many things as possible. It's called grinding, working hard to get into a certain point. And that's why I have achieved in my life. But here I am again. My second reign, put my life on the line each and every time I step inside that ring. I had to apologize to my children because I told them, Daddy, coming back, how y'all feel about that? And all my children, you know, they was excited. They all uh, looked at me with smiles. You know, some of them hugged me, some of my daughters. I love my babies. And, uh, you know, I think they just like seeing their father in the spotlight like that. They like seeing their father training and in his element. And... Uh, and it's a great feeling to see my, my children, to understand what is going on, because you don't know what it would feel like to get in, step inside such a dangerous battles, battlefield and not knowing if you're going to come out on, like you came in. You would never have the feeling of understanding that you had to go 12 rounds, toe to toe, 36 minutes, or strategizing mentally, physically, and emotionally in there. On the outside, people always describe what they see or what they think could happen or uh, everybody got the remedy of how you used to train and all you need to do, all, <laughs> if it's all you need to do, then a lot of people will be doing it. Even with trainers, is all you need to do is all the fighter need to do is do that and you have more champions that you have trained. Some people have never trained no, anyone or never have even got a fighter to a championship level, but they have all the remedy to tell you what it takes to win. If you ain't got in that ring ever before, you really don't know. You can only be on the outside looking in. You understand what I'm saying? So uh, I tell people, respect your fighters. Respect them all. How low? Because they took that, that effort. They've, they've set back and was, was, was selfless to step their self inside that ring. And some everybody not making a lot of money, but they're risking their lives each and every time. And I just want to see more respect from fighter, for, for the fighters you know, because of what we do. And um, I'm looking forward to it. The second rain is going to be a, a fun rain for me. It's going to be a happy rain. I've always been in peace. I've always been happy, you know. Uh, money to me, materialistic things I don't dwell on. You know, that's why you don't see me much after fighting. I go MIA on purpose. I lead this world, at least my mind. And sometimes I don't even want to come back because of what's going on in the world and how the things are, you know? The place where I be in my head, man, I'm free. And then when I come back, I'm, at, I'm, I'm happy and I'm at peace to be around my family, 
to see so many things have gone right for me. When so many people have, have, have tried to stop me, they stole, they, they, they didn't, they didn't uh, done so many things to try to stop me from reaching greatness. Well, but champ, we, we go ahead, champ. Go, go ahead, baby. Go ahead. I just wanted to go ahead and uh, I want to get Robert real quick to give his um, thoughts, and then I'll come back to you real quick, champ, to close it out. And uh, for you, Robert, to close out the press conference on your standpoint. What would a win on Saturday, October 15th, if you were to get your hand raised here at Barclays Center in Brooklyn against the Browns Bomber, Deontay Wilder, what would that mean for you, your career, and your country for that matter? Uh, of course, it's a big deal. It's, uh, it's all I've ever wanted to, to get a chance on, at the World Heavyweight title. And that's why I've been so long uh, in this career. If I wouldn't have seen myself in some point as, as world champion, I, I would have stopped. I, I probably have would have found a much easier do jobs to do. So, uh, deep respect, uh, nice words from from Dante. Thank you. And uh, 15th of October, I'm gonna bring the Viking spirit and finish Sisu. <laughs> Thank you very much, Robert. And champ, Deontay Wilder, I will let you have the floor. What is the one message you want to give the fans who are no doubt anticipating your return? I mentioned at the top of the press conference before we brought you in that the one thing when you step inside those ropes that is guaranteed is electricity in the ring and in the arena. But on Saturday, October 15th, Deontay Wilder what is the one message you want to send to the fans and the rest of the public when it comes to your ascension to once again try to reclaim your heavyweight championship of the world? Over these years, y'all have seen what I'm capable of doing and the passion that I have when I step inside the ring. You know what my mindset is when I step in there. So I don't have to say more about it. So you know on October the 15th, what it's going to mean and what we're going to give. We got two warriors inside the ring, about to give it our all for whether it's our family, whether it's for our country, or whether it's for our fans. One night, one fight, fireworks, sitting on the edge of your seat, waiting on something to happen. You know it's going to happen, but you just waiting. And then bam, baby, good night. One of the two. It's only going to be one winner. We're not looking for draws. The only draws we have on is what we put on every morning. Right leg first, left leg second. Every man wear the same pants. But there's going to be something special inside that ring come October the 15th. They're going to differentiate between the two of, uh, of, of these warriors. I don't have to say more. Y'all know what I come to do. Y'all know the excitement that's going to be the arena. Y'all know the fireworks that's going to be there. It's nothing changed. It's still the same. And this is what boxing needs, excitement. They called the man back, and he's back. October the 15th, you don't want to miss this. I don't have to. I don't have to demonstrate. I don't have to say more. Y'all know what we come to do. You especially know what I come to do. So be there, baby. Get your, get your tickets. Don't be late. It's on pay-per-view, baby. If you can't make it to the arena, click that button. You don't want to miss this one. Any fight Deontay Wilder's in, you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it at all, bro. Now you got Deontay Wilder versus Robert Hellenius. And this, my friends, <laughs> you don't want to miss. I see you guys there. I can't wait. It's going to be fireworks. October the 15th. It's showtime, baby. I'm looking forward to it. I see y'all soon. Thank you very much to the champ, Deontay Wilder, the former WBC heavyweight champion of the world. Hey, D, do you mind giving us a bomb squad to close it up? Bomb squad! All right, Deontay Wilder, Robert Hellenius joining us here via satellite. The kickoff press conference Saturday, October 15th on Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view. Tickets are available here at the Barclays Center box office or SeatGeek.com. We will see you during fight week here 
It is Deontay Wilder, Robert Hellenius in the heavyweight division. That being an eliminator fight. Also, Kayla Platt, Anthony Durrell, a super middleweight title eliminator. Have a great one. We will see you during fight week. Also, don't forget this Sunday, Andy Ruiz, Luis Ortiz on Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view, a special Sunday night edition. We will see you during fight week here in Brooklyn, but we'll also see you tomorrow at fight week in Los Angeles for Ruiz and Ortiz. But don't forget Deontay Wilder, Robert Alenius, Saturday, October 15th on Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view. Have a great rest of your afternoon. Take care, everybody.